Hello, this is Joe from JH Leather, and in this video, I'll be showing you how to make a square race and padded dot collar. So, for this video, you will need your buckle and your G ring, some leather looping, a strip of leather that will be 5 8 wider than your collar. This will be your main uh, collar leather, and you also need a filler strip that is 3 8 narrower than your final collar. You also need some padding foam and some padding leather, which is 0.8 to 1 mil thick. To start with, we're going to find the best end of our leather and then we're going to square that end. Uh, give yourself a couple of inches here or so because we're going to be testing out um, our dividers on that end when we get to that point. So once you've done that, you want to mark out your holes, uh, two inches to the first hole and then you want to mark five holes in total. Uh, when you get to your last hole, you want to generally I sort of double the length of uh, sort of the distance between the holes and that will be where your uh, square filler will end. So once you've marked that out, you need to get the overall measurement for your collar. Now this is just a rough um, guide here because we will be splitting the top of our leather strip off. So you want to give yourself an extra five to six inches past that uh, to allow for testing or if you've got a spare bit of strap, you can use that as well. Once you've done that, you need to set your divider to about 3 sixteenths and just uh, mark on the end, um, sort of like a test bit, just to make sure your distance between them is the uh, right one. So I am making a one inch collar. My strip is one and three eighths wide and my uh, dividers are set to 3 sixteenths to get that one inch strip in the middle. Once you've done that, we're now gonna head over to the splitting machine and split the top layer of our leather. Um, so but what I normally do here, I set the, set the uh, splitting machine up so it's just about lets the strip of leather through and then I just tighten it up from there. Um, so with having that extra length on it, you can do a little test bit. You don't want it wafer thin, but also if it's too thick, it's not going to mold around your filler. Um, so ideally, you could do like some test pieces first just to make sure, but it's just a sort of tiny, amount off the top and so once you've got that right you can then split down to your uh, mark at the point end. So once you split your leather you can then just run your dividers just on this fleshy bit uh, that we have left over just as a guide to where you need to cut to. And um, once you've done that, you can then mark your overall measurement once more. And this time you can mark it on properly um, because we just need to mark sort of from there two inches back and that will be where our filler will start to. So once you've sort of marked that bit out, you now need to get your uh, strap cutter. So you want to set your scrap strap cutter so it's 3 16 or the distance that you're you've marked on the edges wider than your overall um, width needs to be because we're going to take this and strip it down both sides of the leather and therefore have our remaining strip nice in the middle. The reason I do it this way is because if you do it and set it so it's a thinner amount the strap cutter has a tendency to split uh, to sort of come off the leather so it's easier to set it to the wider distance and do it that way and so once you've done that you can see I'm sort of swapping my leather over from different sides so that it's um, easier for me to cut and just got to make sure you don't go over that mark down by your split end and with your dividers you can just match those lines up for cutting later and still with the divider set to 3 8, um, three sixteenths, you can just draw up the middle of your strip to that two inch is mark below your crew. And this is how long our filler is going to be. And now because we've split, because um, we've sort of already cut our leather, um, we're going to have the sides of the main collar is going to be exposed. So we need to, to um, just stain these first before um, we do any gluing. If you get any contact adhesive on the edges of your leather, staining afterwards, the stain won't um, penetrate the leather and you, you just won't get um, sort of the stain to sort of stay. Uh, so it's best to do that just roughly before um, so that you're safe. 
and also whilst you're doing this you need to get a little bit of warm water my hot my uh my workshop's quite cold so that's why that's quite steamy but you don't want it boiling hot you just need it just so it's warm and whilst you've got that you then need to skive down the ends of your filler so i got the wrong size filler to start with so i have swapped mine down to the right size which is 5 8 for a one inch um collar and just skive the ends down to nothing now once you've done that you can glue your filler in place um, you can split your filler down if you want to as well. Um, I have chosen not to do that on this one. On the wider collars, I don't tend to, um, but on the narrower three quarter inch collars and the five eight collars, I will split the filler down just a smidge. So once you've glued your filler in place, you can now glue everywhere else. Um, so you want to make sure you get that glue between like that little L between where the sides of the filler are and the edge of um, sort of your main strip of leather because it's quite important that it sticks to that bit. So give it a nice generous coating of glue on both sides. Okay, so once you've um, got your glue on, you just want to, just with a, a sponge, dampen the sort of split part of the leather. This is just going to allow us to uh, mould uh, this leather around our filler um, a bit easier. And you put it on afterwards because if you put the water on first before the glue, the glue won't stick as well. Okay, so once you've done that, you can then glue your um, leather down over your filler. And then with your bone and uh, single crease, if you have one, you want to shape uh, the leather around the filler. So you want to work this um, quite a lot. You want that. Um, you want the leather to be nice and tight and stuck right into the edge of our square filler here. Um, so that's why I use both the bone and my single crease to do this because I find it gets a better result than using either one of them on their own. Right. So once you've done that, you now actually need to leave uh, your collar to dry. So I generally leave mine overnight. So we're back the next day. And uh, the first thing we're going to do is trim the edges of our uh, split part of the leather. Um, so because we've got the filler in, it's a bit awkward. So I've just got this chopping board here um, that I can push the sort of filler up to and um, to give it some support. And then I can trim um, that edge a bit easier. So you want to do that on both sides um, and get it nice and flush with the edge of your uh, main sort of leather. Um, and then once you've done that, we're going to flip it over and um, cut off those excess strips. So you can use your dividers for this just to join those lines up. And then just with your head knife, just cut between them and so you have you now got your final uh, sort of collar cut down to size and so once we have done that we can now trim the end off and cut an egg point on the end of our point and you can now mark the overall length of your dog collar onto your leather strap and then add two to two and a half inches and cut off flush you can then pop that to one side because we can use that to make our fillers to go around our d-ring and you can now 
uh, edge your leather so I'm using a hollow edge number three just on the flesh side of that point and then I will be using a number one on the grain side you do have to be a bit careful when edging the grain side of the split section um, because the uh, the edge tool can sometimes get a bit hungry and it can take away and gouge out of that um, thin top layer so if you are having trouble with that uh, what you can do is wrap um, or fold over a little bit of sanding paper and just sand the edge instead. So before we get to our staining, we just need to cut two little wedges that are going to go either side of our D-ring. So you can use it with this scrap leather that we have cut off and you just want to scribe this down to nothing. So you've got two nice little wedges to go either side of that D-ring. And now we can also mark out and cut our looping. So you wrap your looping around your strip of leather, mark where it meets and then cut that off. And now you can stain and crease your collar. Right, so once you've done staining and creasing, you want to punch your crew hole. So with the dividers, draw two little tram lines by your crew hole mark. So you've got two guidelines to follow and then you can punch your crew all the way through your leather. Once you've punched your crew, get your number six edge tool and just take out the back of that crew hole. And now you just want to make that turn. So you might need to wet your turn just to make sure the leather doesn't crack. And then pop your buckle in and put this nice pinch this end nice and tight so you can get your stitching up close to that buckle. And then even up on the other side with your set square. You also want to mark the end of your um, filler and then mark like three eighths to half an inch further down from that and that will be where your sort of egg point starts and finishes then you can uh, even up your holes and set your dividers to your stitch marking uh, width and mark all the way around and then with a round object you can just go around and make that egg point and you want to grab your number seven stitch marker and then stitch mark all the way around your collar Okie dokie, so once you've done stitch marking, you just want to skive the end of your turn down to nothing. And you can now tack your buckle uh, looping and D-ring in place.
So once you've tacked your collar together, we now want to cut out some padding. So I like to uh, cut my padding about a sixteenth wider than my overall collar. So you just want to mark that out with your ruler and then cut along that line. So the foam that I'm using here is 6mm Plastazote that I got from Abbey England. You can also use um, neoprene if um, that's easier to get hold of or sort of a similar uh, material. So once you've cut your strip out, you just want to taper the ends on one end and then scythe that down to nothing with your knife. You then need to mark the overall length of your foam. So just marry it up to the back of your uh, collar and then mark with a pen where you need to cut to and then do the same on this end so taper the edges and then skive down um, that end with your knife so once you've done that we now need to cut out our um, leather for our padding <laughs> so I am using 0.8 to 1 millimeter uh, Nappa um, leather here so anything of a similar substance is good. If you can't get hold of a thin nappa, you can use um, like panel hide, but you just have to take into account the extra thickness will add. Um, the extra thickness will make your collars padding wider, um, if that makes sense. Uh, so once you've done that and you've got your strip cut out, you can now just glue your padding onto your lining. And then with a pen, you want to just um, sort of loosely wrap around your uh, padding leather and just mark the center roughly with your with a pen and then once you've done that all the way around and on both sides we can then trim this excess off So once you've trimmed off the excess, you can now glue your lining around your foam core. So you want to get your um, leather nice and tight on the edge um, of the foam else it does get a little bit baggy um, and that's not what you want so as you can see here I'm sort of folding up and then running my finger along the edge um, just to make sure that is nice and tight around that foam and once you've done that all the way around you can get your scissors and at an angle trim the one end and then just double check your length and where to cut the other end so this sort of skives it a little bit and just makes it so it's nice and flush with the leather once it is stitched down. And once you've done that, you can then glue your two pieces together. So you want to make sure you get your foam uh, padding as central as possible on your collar um, so it can take a few attempts if you need to wipe it off and put it back on again you can do um, it's not a problem so once you've got your padding on and in place it's now time to stitch your collar so we will be using double hand stitching and to start with we'll be doing one back stitch with a stitch over the edge just to get that turn nice and tight at the buckle. And so once you're that, you can continue stitching your collar as normal, remembering to do three stitches over that D ring where you skip out one stitch mark. And then if you need to change your threads, all oh, doing one and a half back stitches and then starting new with a back stitch just to lock the threads.
so I've tried uh, a new couple new angles um, um, on this video with my stitching because I know people uh, wanted a bit of a closer view so hopefully I have um, managed that for you um, I don't know if I said before it is just me when I'm filming so it can be a bit awkward sometimes to get the camera where I need it because I can't see it um, so hopefully this is um, what you were liking. <laughs> um, there is another angle a bit later on as well which shows it from a more top down view but basically all we're doing here is just double hand stitching our dog collar. Okay, okay, so when you get near the end of your stitching, you want to remember just to uh, make sure that your three or your your long stitch over your D-ring is in the same place on this side of the leather, and you can do that by just counting the stitches to the first one. And then once you've done that, stitching up to your sort of loop and pre-awling the holes. Like I said in my other videos, this just makes it easier when you then put the looping strip in to um, all through um, the loop. And then you want to finish off this side with your stitch over the edge and one and a half back stitches and then you can just trim the ends of your threads. Okay, so once you've done stitching, you can now block your loop and then we can start doing our finishing touches. So we're going to re-stain the whole of our collar and re-crease it as well. So to get this loop nice and square, what you can do is also just pop it on something metal and just tap it with your tack hammer and you get nice square loops. And when you're doing your recreasing, just make sure you crease all the way around that buckle turn just to get that nice and uh, finished off. Okay. 
And the final thing we now need to do is punch our holes. So if you haven't lined your holes up before with your dividers, do that obviously before you go ahead and punch your holes all wonky. Um, and then yeah, punch your holes all the way through and then your collar is finished. Okay, that's it for this video. Thank you very much for watching. If you like the video, please click the thumbs up button and subscribe for more videos and tutorials. If you have any question or any comments about this video or any of my other videos, please leave a comment down below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. See you in the next video.